Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra Podcast, a 10-minute show for the gardener on the go. I'm your host, Joy Baird, and alongside is my wife and co-host, Holly Baird. This show is dedicated to the home gardener who wants to grow more food or has never grown at all and wants to learn. This program is brought to you in part by dollarseed.com for your flowers, vegetables, and herbs, all organic seeds, all only a dollar a pack. dollarseed.com, willowspringsoap.com for your handmade soaps through the cold kettle process while using traditional methods. willowspringsoap.com. And also buy Authentic Haven Brand Manure Tea, 100% natural and organic manure tea for your plants, vegetables, and herbs. ManureTea.com. Always free shipping. We're going to talk about a topic that was brought up in our discussion at the Madison Garden Expo regarding companion planting. Now, what is companion planting? Companion planting is when you plant two items together so that they can, one will either help one or they'll help each other. Friends helping friends in the garden. Yes. So there's a couple of different uh, combinations. Now, the, the, the list is endless. We're just going to touch on a couple that can pr- help your vegetable garden, large or small, be and uh, produce better this year than in years past. Now, how does companion planting work? Well, companion planting works on a number of different levels. Tall plants, for example, providing somewhat shade for shorter plants, or tall plants providing shade for plants that you may plant early, like uh, lettuce under a trellis of cucumbers. The cucumbers get the sun, the lettuce gets partial shade, as well as the coolness of the days as it becomes hotter so that the lettuce can produce even in hot or, or becoming hotter portions of the growing season. A lot of the other things about companion planting is it helps use garden space effectively. You can prevent pest problems. Some certain companion plants are there to get the pests away from what you're trying to grow. And then also it can help attract beneficial insects. Let's talk about some of the winning combinations when it comes to companion planting in the garden. Tomatoes and cabbages, two unlikely friends that you wouldn't think, but are great companion growers in the garden. And the reason why this is, is tomatoes are repellent to the diamond back moth larvae, and they're basically caterpillars that chew large holes in cabbage leaves. So that unsightly uh, cabbage shotgun look, as they say, that's got the holes all penetrated in the cabbage, uh, the, ca- the tomatoes will basically rid off those insects that produce that. Then we also have peppers and pigweed or ragweed. Now the peppers you might think well what kind of diseases can peppers get? Well they can get in the garden is referred to as a leaf miner which will eat uh, eat the leaves, eat the holes in the leaves and the problem with that is any plant that has holes in the leaves the plant is not operating at 100% effectiveness. The plant is trying to rid itself of the disease. It's trying to to survive more or less than it is to produce quality produce. Here's another one is cucumbers and nasartiums, which is a, a viney flower. They help with the, the cucumbers by repelling cucumber beetles. Yeah, any you know, 98% of the bugs in your garden, and you've heard us say this before, are good bugs. It's the 2% in the garden that are bad bugs that make everything else look horrible and underperform. Now, The benefit to companion planting, as we're talking about, is one plant rids off the enemy of another plant and repels those bugs. So you're not having to use any organic pesticides or, for goodness sake, any commercial pesticides or synthetic pesticides. Because here's the thing, when you use a pesticide in the garden, it doesn't just pick out the bad bugs. It kills all the bugs. So you have destroyed the ecosystem that you work so hard to bring forth in the vegetable garden. Certain bugs in the garden can be beneficial as well as in in, in, in a corporation to the companion planting that you do. For example, ladybugs are the soldiers of the garden. They'll search out and the bad bugs, for example, uh, aphids, and they'll kill them and eat them. So, you know, if you don't have a large quantity of ladybugs, you can mail order them, and there's different methods of keeping them in your garden once you've brought them over or bought them and have them shipped to your residence so they're not going and into other yards and gardens. So some other beneficial companion plants that you can put in your garden is cauliflower and dwarf zinnias. Right. So zinnias are they're very beautiful flowers, but they lure the ladybugs, probably because they're very colorful. They're just beautiful flowers, and that helps keep the ladybugs in, in your garden. Uh, yeah, they keep them in your garden, and they get the other predators away. Now, for example, uh, strawberries and love in a mist. 
is a, a combination that uh, will benefit the strawberry plants. They look nice in the strawberries. They also attract the pollinators to, to the garden as well. Right, bringing the bees into the garden to pollinate those flowers. Marigolds and melons. Now, people speak about marigolds, putting marigolds around the garden to rid of rodents such as rabbits. Now, some people say it works great. Other people say the rabbits eat the marigolds and then come in the garden for a free meal. But nevertheless, marigolds and melons are a combination that work well together due to the fact they control the, they're called the nematodes, and the ruts of the melon. So that's a, another. And that's actually, I guess, as, fe- as effectively as a chemical treatment. So if we can do it naturally, we won't do it uh, with chemicals because mm-hmm. one is saving you money and two is healthier for your garden. Now, with, uh, for example, companion planting we- it can be very beneficial. We're going to talk about radishes here in a minute. But parsnips and radishes are good together. And not so much as a companion planting, but as a space maximizer because the parsnips are a very slow growing root vegetable which can take up to 100 days to produce. But if you space your parsnips out properly between each parsnip, you can put a radish seed in there and the radishes will grow and ready to harvest in 32 days so you can maximize your rows because the parsnips are going to need space anyway. So somewhat of a companion plant but also a space maximizer. And we'll talk about radishes and spinach here is also a great companion plant that you can plant together at the same time in your garden. So it's again with the leaf miners. The the radishes will detour, the radish leaves will detour the leaf miners away from your spinach. So a lot of times if you look at your radishes, sometimes when you pull them, you'll see those little holes in them, and that means that the leaf miners are eating their leaves, and it's not going to cause any damage or harm to your radishes. And if you plant your radishes by your spinach, then those leaf miners will will go to the radish leaves. So you'd much rather have good, healthy spinach than good, healthy radish greens. Now, radish greens are edible, but if that's one way to detour the leaf miners to uh, eat the radishes instead of destroying that beautiful spinach you have, it's a great alternative. Other ways to companion plant in your garden is corn and beans. Now, this is part two of the three-sister method that the Native Americans used many years ago. But the benefit to corn and beans is... Well, one thing is is that the, the beans can grow up the corn stalks. The other thing is that the beans attract beneficial insects that they can prey, they can prey on corn pests. So certain um, insects that are causing the corn problems are leaf hoppers, army worms, and leaf beetles. So what happens is that it attracts in the insects that keep those bad bugs away. Right. So, you know, you, a lot of times if you are trying to grow corn in the backyard, you're going to ha- be susceptible to many diseases. So by planting pole beans, I assume pole beans or bush beans next to the corn, you can, uh, you know, use that as a deterrent. And if you plant pole beans next to the corn, you can actually use a natural trellis of using the corn as a trellis. So you can maximize, again, maximize the space in the backyard or in your garden, wherever that garden would be placed at. Cabbage and dill are another great combination. Now, cabbage, we talked about how the cabbage is beneficial in, uh, uh, next to the tomatoes. How is the dill and the cabbage companions or fl- friends in the garden well it's so that it, well, it's actually just not just cabbage but also broccoli brussels sprouts pretty much any cruciferous vegetable but the the dill attracts tiny wasps that control the cabbage worms so uh, making the cabbage healthier by and you're getting herbs as well with the dill well those are just some of the many different ways to companion plant. And if you've never companion planted, I would encourage you to look into it. It can be very beneficial to the health and produce of your garden. I'm Joy Baird. And I'm Holly Baird. And this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra Podcast, a 10-minute show for the gardener on the go. And it's been sponsored in part by DollarSeed.com, WillowSprings.com, and ManureTea.com. For more information, you can always visit our website at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.